Okay, um, thank you for letting me speak to y'all about this project. I've been working on it, I worked on it last semester as part of a National Register class at UT Austin. It's concerning, um, whenever it shows up, <laughs> Blackshear Elementary, um, which is part of the Yay Austin bus. Um, <laughs> So Blackshear Elementary School is a historically African-American elementary school and formerly high school and all-purposes school in East Austin um, that kind of presents an uh, intersection of public memory and documented history in uncovering all the layers of the evolution of the campus. It was built in 1902 and every layer of the building kind of like shows shells of it. It's kind of like an Easter egg hunt of figuring, figuring out when everything was built. So, yeah. So this uh, photo right here is from a City of Austin survey they had done around in circa the 1950s of all the high schools in Austin. Um, so Blackshear, before it was known as Blackshear Elementary, was actually a Gregory Town School, which originated in 1890 as a wooden shack, probably around four blocks west of its location right now on 11th Street, which you'll see later. And when it was moved to this location in 1902, um, this little core, oh wait, ooh, here. This little core right here, this core four, um, four, four room building was built in 1902 and you get this little facade in 1936 which, which a bun with a bunch of landscaping that was done. And I'll get further into that as well. So this is what the school looks like right now. The school serves as a Blue Ribbon uh, Fine Arts Academy for Austin. And um, it was part of a revitalization effort to make sure that the school was still hitting numbers that it needed to for the city of Austin since they have been demolishing some schools as of recently. And um, yeah. So Blackshear sits on 11th Street. Luckily, two presenters before me have basically explained the entire city plan to you of 1928 in Austin, which, which was really unfortunate, but basically allotted all African-American services east of I-35 or what was East Avenue. So on this 11th Street corridor, you have Blackshear, which sits adjacent to Houston Tillotson University, which is the oldest higher education institution in Austin, which is a also historically black um, university. And as well, all these little pings are from another project that I had done for the Historical Commission in regards to green books, which were travel guides uh, for African Americans during the Jim Crow era. And all of these sites are um, conveniently all located around 11th Street, which kind of shows the significance of having Blackshear sit on the lot of 11th Street where it formerly sat around here in the 1890s and now currently here. So it kind of shows the significance of where Blackshear sits in the landscape of East Austin as well. Oh, in addition, um, <laughs> This little blue point right here, I'll mention later, is the house of the person who kind of uh, spearheaded and brought my interest to this project, um, Miss Bonnie Rice Gardner, who also is the daughter of a long-term uh, principal at Blackshear who led Blackshear through all of its formative years for about 40 years as principal and led a lot of um, restoration and building and construction um, as well. So in this Sanborn mat right here, you can kind of sit, see where Blackshear sat in 1921. Um, so it was originally a high school. It served, I believe, kindergarten all the way to 12th grade. And at the time, there's records of saying there are around 600 students were served by this high school, which is kind of impossible to imagine by how small it used to be. And um, all adjacent to it are um, single family homes, an extension of the school as well sits to the east of it. And then in the Sanborn map, it might be a little bit um, blurry, but in 1935 to 1960, with all these um, additions, you see all the build dates for how, how it's expanded from that original core to how it took over those single family homes into a campus that kind of takes over the landscape and faces that 11th Street corridor and kind of 
consumes maybe to the driver by a, like a significant portion of their experience. Um, so in this little classroom stayed extant till around 19, around like the late 20th century, and then it was demolished to fit in another edition that you'll see later. Um, so from this alone, you can see the 1902 base right here, and then a 1936 uh, WPA funded um, extensions for an auditorium and a, a prettier facade, and then you have a cafetorium from 1949 done by prominent architects in Austin, Je Jessen and Jessen Architects, who did a lot of um, public school campuses in Austin, and then the gym edition and the new library edition were done in, 19, in the 1960s. And then there's a new pre-K edition that was done in the 2000s when the school kind of shifted more into an elementary cause with building codes. Obviously, um, most of the pre-K classrooms had to have bathrooms attached and that actually has become a lot of an issue for hosting classrooms and younger populations in this core building that can't be really changed much, but was built in 1902 and doesn't really have the facilities to um, facilitate that. Yeah. Also, um, in the intersection of public memory and um, documented history, a lot of this research kind of contradicted itself, and I had to like find myself like plowing through things to figure out what was actually correct. So, um, interestingly enough, the date that the Sanborn says at 1907 is actually incorrect. That's been proven wrong by city council minutes and numerous public memory accounts. Um, and as well, um, city directories. Yeah. So this is what the campus looks like from an aerial view now. It has this sprawling campus that takes up a lot of the 11th Street um, corridor. And then you have um, a new pavilion and two playground facilities and a later um, parking lot addition as well. And from this view, you can see the community garden that was instilled by the principal of the um, school back in the 1930s, Friendly Rice. Um, this community garden is still um, active to this day. It engages not only members of the elementary school, but um, neighborhood members as well. Um, it was one of the first in Austin as well. And then um, there is a monument dedicated um, in the middle of it and some WPA era fencing that I'll get into later. Yeah. So this is Miss Bonnie Rice Gardner. She's very charismatic and very, very sharp in her way. Um, I had interviewed her for a Texas Historical Commission project, Oral History, this past summer. And while the project cons uh, concerned the green books and sites in Austin, she somehow managed to squeeze in 20 minutes about Blackshear um, because of her dad's um, significance with Blackshear. She never actually even attended Blackshear, but she had so much of a tie to the school and so much pride in it and what her father did to create a legacy for it that she um, just had to talk about it. Um, so this is her at a event at the library of the elementary school in dedication to Friendly Rice's birthday. They do celebrations every year to this day. So um, to the left you have Friendly Rice. He was principal at Blackshear from 1932 to um, circa the 1960s, 1970s. Um, in this family scrapbook you have um, um, fr friendly, his wife, and then Vonnie Rice Gardner. And as you can see in the back, you have like your classic green blackboard and the white, be white painted beadboard from the 1950s. Um, all of this still is like strikingly the same, even though the school has gone undergone so many renovations, it has so many layers to it that the interiors still um, have a lot of those and I'll show those later as well. So in the research uh, process to get this as like a National Register project, um, we I went to the campus and got a tour by the vice principal of the school at the time, and I she had shown us this binder, and this binder um, was created by a principal, how, not known how many years passed, 
but this binder was passed on principle to principle so they understood the history and the significance of Blackshear. So it was kind of crowdsourced information and history about Blackshear kind of just put all in there so that the next principal would know what kind of legacy and history the campus had. And the most interesting thing out of it was this photo that was attached to the front of the binder, which was believed to be the facade of Blackshear which is really interesting because it's not the same building. <laughs> and that kind of ignited my like curiosity into the idea of like public memory versus documented history. So like how people perceive their historic, historic sites and how we can use that to understand their say biases or how the community, how much it truly values a site and what it sees in a site. So um, the, we, I was able to debunk that this is definitely not it. It has the same little pillars right here and like same landscaping choices, but the windows and everything are not, yeah. And um, this photo right here, um, this is uh, from faculty of a um, high school, I believe, in Austin, but not like Blackshear or Anderson. And the woman to the third to the left right here is Miss Ida Hunt. She was a principal at Blackshear in the 80s. And in some archival information, I found that she was accredited to, accredited to a lot of historic preservation work in trying to document the history of Blackshear. And um, I've been able to find a lot of documents with this really strange eclectic border right here attached to them, so I'm believing that these might be attributed to her and her historic preservation work and how she perceived Blackshear as a self-made historian. Um, so right here is a photo of the community garden in its current state. This little um, structure was just built actually like a couple months ago, and this garden stays remarkably the same um, within it. Oh, wait. Maybe I'll show that later. Yeah, within it is the um, monument that'll come up later in the presentation, yeah. Um, right here you can see um, all the elementary school teachers who taught in 1935 all listed um, by memory. And a lot of this has been done by work of Ms. Vani. Um, she was, whenever we did the oral history interviews, she had a photo of all the teachers and the librarians of the uh, elementary school. And she was able to list off every single name without hesitation, which was very impressive. Um, and also you see that original 1935, 1936 facade that was um, built. So as you can see, you still have that green bean board, uh, that green board, and even though it's been painted over for its new role as a fine arts academy, and this is now the dance room, <laughs> um, you still have like those layers of history remnant, even if it's not as prominent anymore, which is interesting to see how even the even though the school needs to evolve to building code and to what the district wants, it still chooses to keep certain elements out of like, respect and understanding of like the legacy that the school has. Um, this is for a historic photo from what the one the classrooms would have looked like back um, around in the fifties. Um, and this is, um, this room right here is the current art room for the Fine Arts Academy, but um, in doing the tour, I was um, made known by the art teacher that actually a lot of um, historic wood flooring is actually underneath these tiles, but, have, but haven't been touched at all. And that this room used to be the historic library, which um, Blackshear was known for having the first African-American elementary school library in the Southwest, they claim, which has been some archival materials kind of um, debate about, but I'm not gonna argue it. <laughs> Big, um, there is no librarian attributed. There's like a couple, a lot of the teachers kind of like took pride as being librarians as well. Um, so this is one of the corridors on the second floor. You still have these like historic um, doors, probably from like the 1936 or 1949 renovations, still standing, even though everything around it may have changed. And um, an interesting thing around when we had toured the building, um, a lot of the doors had shifted to fit building codes and all that kind of stuff. So you see that evolution of a campus. Um, side by side. A lot of things still remain the same even if they have new causes. Um, this is kind of another display of how the campus is evolving and it's kind of a shell of what it used to be. So 
there's like a semi intact bell from like the 1940s, like still there, but on the second floor, it's still there, but they took off this little area for no reason. Um, and then this bell still remains and it's actually placed within the courtyard garden entrance as well. And I found in my research that um, it was, he, um, in his first year as principal, Friendly Rice had obtained a CWA appropriation for a lot, around $1,100 at the time for beautification process purposes. So this was the only project in Austin that got an okay, and as the document like states, despite segregation, like this was the only school, and they take pride in the fact that this was the only school that received appropriation like this. Um, so within this, it was documented that they got a rock drinking fountain, uh, yeah, a rock uh, drinking fountain, a fish pond, rock fences, which are aligned right here, if you can see them. And those are still extant to this day. Um, and then the landscaped front, rock flowers. And at the time, this made Gregory School one of the most scenic spots in Austin. And a lot of people used it as a community space outside of school hours, maybe to like just hang out on the lawn or for children to have fun out after school. Um, so as you can see, these, um, as documented right here, um, these rock um, fences are still extant, even though you have like a metal fence right behind them, even though, because I guess they're low lying. Um, this monument right here is placed within the community garden. It was made by um, community members and school, um, school um, members as well. Um, most interestingly enough, there are still buttons from when they made it and they just kind of like shoved them in the monuments. So they're like kind of intermittently there. This glass mosaic is newer, but you still see in the lower layers that there are like odds and ends kind of stick sticking into the mortar. Um, and then this monument was dedicated to W.H. Passon, who was a significant educator in Austin at the time that passed away right on when, right around when Friendly had taken in as, princ as principal. And um, interestingly enough, with this same border in this document, this was placed in the school in its little history, um, little cabinet curio, and um, a monument that's not really the same one was listed as a time capsule in their garden. and. Um, I am still kind of grappling with whether this may be true or not because you have an outhouse in the back, back in the back where this garden would have sat and kind of is adjacent to what it is, even though the monument looks significantly different. And then also, um, the monument was placed in 1932, so it's around it's it's like 10 years away from its 100 year anniversary if they haven't have uncovered it yet. Yeah, and then lastly. Um, Blackshear um, recently in 2019 did an initiative to, or 2018, made an initiative to put a mural right outside on the 11th Street facade on this corner, say, say this corner right here, and then 11th Street's right there. Um, and part of their roll call for this was listing all the acclaims that Blackshear had in the community and the neighborhood and attributing it to Friendly Rice's significance. Um, so on the list was like Friendly Rice's portrait, of course, um, the fact that Friendly Rice brought the first hot lunches to students in the 1930s in all of AISD. Um, the significance of the Fine Arts Academy now, um, the fact that the school had the first black um, elementary school library in the Southwest, and someone delivered, um, and that's what currently sits on this. And interestingly enough, they put this on the 11th Street um, facing um, corridor because they wanted it to be seen on this bustling 11th Street, which is now encountering a lot of cases of gentrification and displacement, and kind of showing an outward expression of this significance in the community, in the neighborhood. And um, they also made a point to place this on the newer edition of the building. So this is on the 2000s edition rather than anything else, even though there are plenty of corners facing from, from older eras. And that's it. Thank you. <laughs>